Hi Mark, thanks for your question. Uh, it's a great question. We're looking at the subtle nuances of creating ionic equations. Um, so it's the rules that uh, you're trying to work out right now. So in your question, you were looking at two different um, equations and creating uh, the complete ionic equations for each. And you were wondering the differences between each. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break apart the ions uh, for each of these compounds that I have uh, and show you the difference, differences and the rules that I followed to do that. So first of all, looking at this first one, we have two NH4, which is our ammonia ion, and uh, chlorine. Whenever one of the main rules that we go by is that when you create your ions, from the compound, you're going to pull apart each of the ions separately. Uh, and if there's a coefficient, which is a whole number in front of the compound, so this two is what we call a coefficient, we're going to apply that to each of the ions that make up the compound. So we're going to pull apart the NH4, which is our ammonium ion, we're going to include the coefficient of 2 in front, and when we look at our polyatomic ion chart, we know that NH4 has a charge of positive 1, and then we include the aqueous identifier for that ion. Chlorine, when we pull it apart, chlorine has a negative 1 charge, but we also want to apply that coefficient of 2 in front as well. And so this becomes 2 NH4 plus plus 2 chlorine negative aqueous. So there's the two ions that are pulled apart um, for that one. For this next one, this next compound, our two ions are going to be our Hg and our NO3 with the two. Now, we don't have a coefficient in front. We assume it to be 1, so we don't have to do anything with that. And when we pull apart Hg, uh, we're going to keep the subscripts. You always want to keep the subscripts. That's not going to move to the front, okay? That subscript stays where it is, and uh, Hg has a charge of positive 2. So there's that ion, and then NO3 is a polyatomic ion. We keep it all together, and it has a charge of negative 1, but a subscript of a subscript. So when you have a subscript outside of parentheses, this now becomes the coefficient in front of that ion. So basic rule, subscripts don't become coefficients unless it's outside of parentheses. So that's why this 2 on the Hg, it stays as a subscript, but the 2 on the full NO3, it comes out and becomes the coefficient because it's outside of the parentheses. And that becomes aqueous. So that's why we didn't pull this 2 off of the H Hg and make it into a coefficient because subscripts don't do that unless they're outside of the parentheses like in NO3. Same thing here with the NH4. This subscript stays with H. It doesn't get pulled out to the coefficient. Now, if there was a coefficient in front of this whole thing, we would have had to have multiplied to buy it to get our number, but we don't have to do that in this case. Okay, uh, that's explaining the ions here. Let's look at the ions on the other one. I'm just pulling out the ones that um, you had asked a question for. So we have um, the coefficient in front of our potassium phosphate here. So we're going to keep that two in front of the potassium. Uh, and potassium has a positive charge, 
So there's our potassium ion plus our phosphate, which is PO4. Again, this too is also going to be applied to that PO4 um, ion, which has a charge of negative 3 aqueous. So you can see that both subscripts stay where they are um, because they are uh, associated more closely with those ions compared to if it was outside of the parentheses. And then separating this compound, uh, the 6 is going to go with the potassium, which has charge of positive 1 aqueous. And the chlorine also gets the 6 applied to it with a negative aqueous. So I hope that helps to uh, clarify the rules. If you have a coefficient, it applies to both the ions. You keep the closest subscripts as is unless the subscript is outside of the parentheses. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.